We've looked at examples that use the radio wave as a fairly literal representation for sound. Here we have an example where the frequency of these rings being generated is controlled by the amplitude of one of the audio tracks. Whether you use radio waves or not, I want to take a look at them a little more closely. I'll look at some techniques in terms of how to explore, customize, create presets um, that allow us to use different uh, settings more easily. And this type of workflow is something that you can apply to other types of generator effects um, that you might be using. In fact, I have a preset created. I'm going to go in here and search for See, I think this one had the word wave in it, actually. Octo color radio wave. Okay, I have no layers selected. I turned off all of my layers. And when I double click on this, it's going to create a solid. When I hit spacebar, you see I have a radio wave using an eight sided polygon. The producer point is animating across the screen as it goes. The color is animating as it goes. And there are a few other parameters that we'll take a look at. You might be able to tell that the stroke starts out thicker and becomes thinner, fades out towards the end. And right here towards the end, you notice the frequency decreasing until it stops producing waves altogether. These are all things that we want to be able to control using an effect like this. So going back to the beginning, you see that the producer point is animating. All the parameters are set at birth. That means that as I animate the color, for instance, the color was blue at the beginning and the polygons that are generated at the beginning stay blue throughout the animation. Now the color is animated to green, so the new polygons are green and will remain green. Farther on, we see the color changes to orange and so on. The alternative to that is each frame. And then we see everything changing color as the colors animate. That can be very useful. But for this animation, I think the setting parameters at birth is a little more effective. You can animate the number of sides. You can change the curviness. Here we have straight edges. I could round the edges, get a little bit different effect going. Frequency is an important thing to set. Here you see the frequency is animated. This is so I could turn it on and off. Starting at five polygons per second, at the end I have zero. That's why they stop. But you see there's a gradual fall off because I'm using linear keyframes to interpolate. If I use toggle hold keyframes, I could just turn it on and off uh, very abruptly. Expansion is the speed that these shapes grow. So expansion you should think of as speed of expansion of each shape. Orientation refers to um, like the rotation of the shape. The if you have a triangle, for instance, this would determine whether it's pointing up or down or right or left. Direction and velocity. I'll talk about together. Normally, with the radio wave, the rings just expand. If you give it a velocity, that's the speed at which 
the center of each shape moves away from the producer. If it's moving away, you need to know what direction it's going. So here, see me changing the direction. If I change the velocity, you see the shape's quickly moving away from the producer point shown here. I'm just going to undo a couple of times. Spin set to 20 here. That's the spin of each polygon as it goes through its lifespan. Lifespan here is set to 10 seconds. We don't want these things to live forever necessarily. If they go off screen, that's fine. But very often we want an effect to die out. For instance, if you're doing a sound, sounds decay, fall off. If I decrease this, you see um, the, uh, the lifespan is now 6.6, .6, which is shorter than the length of the animation. So we see things dying off. Relative to that, we also see different things we can animate for the stroke. For instance, fade out time is set to five seconds. So if the lifespan of each shape is 6.6 .6 seconds and it starts fading out five seconds from the end, you see it starts fading out very quickly after uh, the birth of each of these things. The starting width is set a little bit higher than the end. I can make that more exaggerated and you see the thicker lines decreasing. You can animate the opacity of the color. Profile is an interesting thing. This actually determines the character of the stroke in terms of the softness of the edge, whether um, I think the default is square, where you have a really sharp edge on these things. I Triangle is kind of like an even fall off. Sawtooth is um, kind of directional, where one edge is sharper or brighter than the other edge. I had it on sign before, which is a very smooth um, kind of fall off, almost makes them look like tubes if you look at them very closely. All right, so those are most of the parameters here. Under wave type, um, right now it's set to polygon with eight sides. The other choices are image contours, so you could actually base the shape on the contours of an image or a mask. Uh, we'll take a look at these in the next video.